Labour Party, it's out of the UK, by the way, an opposition political party, wants emergency laws to stamp out dangerous anti-vaccine content online. COVID-19. Stop anti-vaccination fake news online with new law, says Labour. She mm -hmm. said of this. It tampers with your DNA. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you are tuning in. My name is Jonathan Torres Herrera, and you are watching or listening to the JTH show. Today, let's talk about COVID-19 anti-vaxxers. But first, roll the intro. All right. And as always, remember, you can listen to this show and any other episode on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts or Radio Public. And if you are already listening on any of those platforms, thank you very much. It really helps the show. You know what else helps the show a lot? If you take about two seconds to hit that like button, it really helps the show. If you do it on any of the platforms that you might be listening on, including Facebook, Instagram or, of course, here on YouTube. In addition, if you take another two seconds to make sure that that ring notification bell is on, it really helps the show a lot. Uh, you know, in recent times, I have gotten things like my Instagram completely taken away for some reason. And in addition, you know, we have a whole bunch of subscribers. I get notifications pretty much on a daily basis that we gain two, four, five, six subscribers. Uh, for a while there, we weren't going through some crazy growth spurt. And all of a sudden, uh, viewership just dropped and uh, subscriber count stayed pretty, pretty steady. But uh, viewership, it was just like, oh, you know, nobody's going to watch even though they're subscribed. In fact, I have some family members that they're like, dude, I'm subscribed. Like, I actually enjoy your shows, but I never get um, notified. Uh, rarely, if any, I uh, get notified that you, you know, publish a video. Um, so, yeah, if you don't mind, it looks like the notification bell is one of the ways. And of course, if you follow me on any of my social media uh, and for that, I'll leave a simple one link URL uh, for Linktree so that you can um, find all of our social media platforms. OK, well, uh, let's move on to the story. And, you know, I, I picked up the story and I decided to you know read upon it and, and do some research because, of course, uh, something that is coming. Right. And that is the coronavirus vaccine. And while this video might get, you know, demonetized or suppressed just because I have the word anti-vaxxer or I'm saying that word for that matter, I feel like it's something that it's, you know, important for people to know about. Why? Because, again, it's coming our way, right? In fact, a lot of the vaccines have already been approved and they allegedly have some great results. And it's coming in the sense that, you know, soon you will have to debate whether and, and you no, know, not just in theory, of course, right? Like it was maybe for the last year or so. I was like, wait, when I, when there's a a medic uh, medication or vaccine, am I gonna take it? No, no, no. I think it's gonna be very real, right? Because again, the vaccines uh, that are that were developed are here, right? And then allegedly they have some great results. So you will have to make a decision, but not only for yourself, for some of you guys, more importantly, for people like your elderly and your children. And there is a story that caught my attention that is uh, the Labour Party, it's out of the UK, by the way, an opposition political party, wants emergency laws to stamp out dangerous anti-vaccine content online. A report in the BBC.com headline, COVID-19, stop anti-vaccination fake news online with new law, says Labour. And again, that is in reference to the Labour Party. Um, in the uh, article, uh, there are things like uh, many social media platforms label false content as misleading or dis uh, disputed and all remove posts that contravene terms of service. Speaking to staff at a medical facility in London, Prime Minister Boris Johnson said there are all these anti-vaxxers now, aren't they? And also added they are all nuts. And here, here's an example, right? of of a post that you know that says things like poison fraud toxic scam and you know later on it's labeled misleading and is taken down by the corresponding social media platform now that's not that's not the the end of it right because i don't think that like boris johnson says they are all nuts I think that there's going to be many, uh, many people out there that feel that there is a good reason they are not in agreement with um, uh, vaccines, right? There are, this has been something that has been 
um, I guess, already a topic of controversy when it comes to the, something like the yearly va uh, flu vaccine. Right? You have many people feeling like, hey, uh, every time I, I get the flu vaccine, uh, I get sick or I don't, you know, I don't take it because, um, you know, I've read all these things online. Right. And, and people have told me not to do it. Uh, friends, family or just again, just random uh, randos online. Uh, which then, of course, like any other topic, right, led me to another article and another article uh, because that's what Google does. And the next one I'm going to talk about is out of the Guardian.com, which headlines advocates blame anti-vaxxers after four year old boy dies from the flu. Now, of course, uh, before I get into some of the bullet points here from the article, you're going to have people argue and say, JT, perhaps that boy unfortunately passed away because of, of other issues, right? That we, we do not know about. And uh, of course, the, the big pharma uh, industry is just trying to make you believe that it was because of the, of the vaccine or rather lack of, um, you know, then you have people, of course, on the other side saying that's, that's bogus. You know, the mother um, should have, uh, listened and and you know done done the vaccine or medication for that matter right and, and in the article you'll find um something that reads the boy's mother geneva montoya admitted in a facebook post that she refused to fill the doctor's prescription for tamiflu the most common viral medication prescribed to treat the flu they also put on here that she wrote the doc prescribed tamiflu i did not pick it up Rather than medical attention, Montoya solicited unapproved at-home flu treatment for, from fellow members of the Stop Mandatory Vaccination Group. Many of the 45 comments included what Montoya called natural cures, including lavender herbs and peppermint oil, non-mentioned medical treatment. And the reason, at least personally to me, that wasn't infuriating, uh, it's because I have children. Right. And, and for those of us that also have children, you know, it's the last thing that you ever want to think about is that your child may pass away for whatever reason. We understand as adults that, well, life happens and, and you know, accidents can happen. And, you know, that is a very real, um, you know, thing of life that, you know, we we will all pass away at one point or another. But we never want to picture that, you know, our children can pass away that young at four years old where they haven't even begun to live anything. You know, it's just it's it's infuriating even more so because the child passed away because the mother decided to listen to strangers online. Right. Instead, as she said herself, um, uh, fill the the prescription right for for something as simple as, as, as Tamiflu for her kid. Again, I know I, I can already hear it from people saying, JT, the boy could have died from some other things and you have no idea if they're just, you know, again, spinning this whole thing for you to believe or make us believe that it was because of the flu and the mother not not doing what the doctor told her. I understand that, but I will tell you that I have seen countless things online when it comes to mothers having their children literally at home with 102, 101 fevers, you know, children are shaking in bed and they refuse to go to the doctor. Because they don't believe, on, you know, in Western medicine. Uh, I don't remember the story quite right, uh, but I know that a few years ago there was that, you know, those parents that that were, I believe, I want to say, prosecuted as well because they were they were they didn't believe in meat and they want you know or anything for that matter, anything kind of protein, and they were feeding their children a vegan diet or something like that, um, and the child passed away, right? And and listen, here's here's the way I see it, okay. Um, when the COVID vaccine comes out, JT, are you going to take it? I will tell you what I'm going to do. And I don't expect you to do what I'm telling you that I'm going to do. And for that matter, I will tell you, do your research because ultimately if, if you're going to listen to anyone it should be to yourself after you educated yourself, after you have done your due diligence and making sure that you spend whatever time you need to spend educating yourself over what is it that you're you're about to be injected with i'm all with the people that that believe that hey there are definitely some vaccine out vaccines out there that maybe are not to your benefit but the government makes you think that you know what i'm sure throughout history we have had some psychopaths in medicine that maybe have you know done that i you know it's jesus at this point almost anything is possible but i also believe that they are the vast majority of medicine out there including vaccinations 
are for your benefit, right? Um, do vaccinations have side effects? Yes. A heart transplant, okay? If, if you want to use that same logic, has its risks, right? Everything from going under to uh, a simple infection or your body simply rejecting something that is supposed to keep it alive, like a heart, like a liver, like a lung. You, you hear about it every day almost, right? Oh, so, so unfortunately passed away because this didn't go as expected. Um, it, it's, it's one of those risks that you have to assess, right? But you also have to consider, well, what are the risks if I don't, right? What, what is it? What is it that I'm going to risk if I don't take a COVID vaccination, right? Do I risk my life? And again, more importantly, do I risk my family's life? Of course, you also have um, reports like out of healthline.com. And uh, this one was, was pretty interesting. And the reason it, it was interesting is because they almost ar not argued against vaccinations, but they, they gave pretty good uh, bullet points, right? Things like the belief that vaccinations can cause autism has become widespread in the past few years. It is also believed that a vaccination wouldn't protect you. Those who are vaccinated can still get sick but they will experiment mild symptoms. And that's my point, right? You have to weigh your risks, right? In, in taking a vaccination or not taking a vaccination. But do I believe, uh, like unfortunately, uh, Geneva Montoya, you should uh, risk your loved one's life because you have such strong beliefs? Or for that matter, like uh, Emerald Robinson, who uh, BBC.com uh put a, a article up where she says that uh, she is a White House correspondent for a, a pro-Trump website, Newsmax, who told her 264,000 followers on Twitter to beware, quote, of the Pfizer slash BioNTech vaccine. Emerald Robinson claimed that in the in the tweet, quote unquote, again, because this, this I'm not saying this, the, she said of this, it tampers with your DNA. You know, the article there gave you some some good facts, right? Like uh, vaccines contain fragments of viruses, right? It's generic material, RNA. Injecting RNA into a person doesn't do anything to the DNA of a human cell, said Professor Jeffrey Alman of Oxford University. Ms. Robinson's tweet included the assertion that RNA vaccine technology has never been tested or approved before. Ms. Robertson also claimed 75% of vaccines trial volunteers had experienced side effects, but Pfizer and BioNTech have reported no serious safety concerns in their trial. And of course, of course, when I read this, I'm like, oh, you know, these, these, you know, big pharma companies, they're not going to outright tell you what is extremely dangerous for your health or not, because, well, for one, um, you know, you have uh, their image, right, that they, I'm sure they, they want to protect. You also have their pockets. So I understand, I hear you for all of you guys out there, maybe thinking JT, but you know, some of these companies are, are just telling us what we want to hear because they don't want to lose out of money and another client. Yeah. I mean, can't blame for, you know, those of you guys that are thinking that way, but I cannot stress it enough. You know, uh, at least in my case, I will do my research. I will definitely wait if I'm not one of those individuals that I am an imminent, imminent risk, right. Of getting the, the COVID-19. Um, you know, in my case, I'm home 98% of the time during the week. That 2% I leave open for times that I go out and get the mail. And when I go out and get some groceries and, for, you know, and groceries, again, uh, I say very loosely because or go out and get groceries, I should say. I say very loosely because I have our, our stuff delivered right by by uh, one of those services. So, yeah, it's about 2% out of my week that I actually go out for a quick errand or something like that. And, and sometimes... I have been weeks or there have been weeks where I'm 100% here at home. Like, you know, Sunday through Saturday, I am here at home. I don't go out at all. Um, not because I am paranoid, just because my work is here at home. My kid's school is here at home. Uh, we Again, we get our stuff delivered when it comes to groceries. So there's really no reason to go out. Um, so will, will I be one of those first individuals, you know, in line to get a vaccine? I, I'm going to be honest with you. Probably not. But will I not? get a vaccine overall uh probably not right because uh i will probably end up getting one right i don't know if i uh confuse some of you guys i will probably excuse me end up getting one right um 
I do I want to see kind of how everybody else takes it? I'm, I'm sure that's the mentality of many people. You know, again, unless you are in some type of like imminent, you know, danger of getting this, you know, this, you know, this virus, maybe even once or twice already, you're going to want to get that vaccine immediately. Some might say, right, because, again, maybe you work in, you know, in, in a position where you face um, people every day and you don't know who's coming in into your establishment and you're like, damn, every day that I work is, is I, I'm at a maybe 90 percent risk of getting covid so I understand for those people that might rush to get this vaccine. I am not one of those because, again, I am home all the time. My family is home all the time. But I I do think about getting it because eventually I do want my life to go back to quote unquote normal. And I believe that, unfortunately, now with this COVID being around, that might be that might be just it. Right. That might be just what allows me to have that normalcy back in my life. Whatever that means to me, right? Because whatever normal means to you might not mean normal to me and so vice versa. So will I not get it uh, at the beginning? No. Will I get it eventually? Yes. It is very, very likely that I'm going to get it eventually, right? Because I don't want to eventually end up saying, oh, guess what? I got COVID, right? Um, so, you know, that's that's my stand on this whole COVID thing. I, I thought it was important for me to bring it up, have a conversation with you guys, because I like to hear for those of you guys that have been brave enough. And I appreciate you to drop a comment down below and say, JT, here's here's where I stand on this vaccination. Here's what I think about it. I really appreciate it. You guys have no idea um, how much it makes my day to see your comments on there. And I get to interact with you guys sometimes because of my other full time job. I don't get to immediately answer, but I know eventually I get to them, you know, and I like, I like to to hear from you guys, right? Because at the end of the day, I think that's how we all can make a better judgment is by hearing other people's opinions. Again, not not following to the T. That's, don't get it confused, right? Uh, like I said at the beginning, I don't want to want you to to say I'm going to do what JT does because he said to do that. Hell no. I, at most, if you think what I'm saying makes sense, you're welcome to take whatever is is best for you. Uh, but this is in no way, you know, a, a how to. Or the COVID vaccine. And for that matter, it shouldn't be like that for anything. Anything that I say or anybody that anybody says that, right? You guys know, for those of you guys that have been here before, and those of you guys haven't, you know that I have a pretty big problem with so you know so-called influencers. I believe people need to make up their own mind. People, you know, be need to be themselves, right? And 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 make those critical thinking um decisions in what is best for their family not just because they are being uh, justified embraced um understood by a group of people that you feel that you don't even know but they know you they you don't know them but they know you you know what i mean no not okay so that's it for today guys thank you very much for uh for tuning in as always and uh yeah i hope you guys have a great rest of your day see ya Hey, thanks for watching the JTH show. Remember, you can catch all the episodes, full episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Radio Public. You can also visit www.thejthshow.com to catch episodes there and to catch anything that we had to blur out because of YouTube um, or any other platform. We usually put all of our raw uh, information in there that is uncensored. Um, you can also become a member at www.thejthshow.com to catch all the special perks. Thanks for watching.